Welcome back everybody. I'll tell you I'm testing out two different types of cut resistant gloves. These are level 5 and these are level 9. I've gotten a lot of requests for this one and it's the most popular one on Amazon, but this is the one that seems like the most professionals prefer. So let's get to the bottom of that in today's video. All right, so these are definitely not new and I've watched a bunch of videos on gloves like this. The most popular ones are probably Unbox Therapy and the King of Random, but none of the videos I saw really compare two different levels of gloves. Most of the ones I've seen seem to focus on the level five gloves that are more popular. Now, when you hear me talking about the levels of gloves, that is the cut resistance levels. That's the ANSI standard that goes from one through nine. That is achieved, I believe, by measuring grams of force from a TDM 100 machine. Now, it might surprise you to know that I don't have a TDM 100 machine laying around here. I thought I had one, but I don't. So it won't be that scientific, but I will do my best. I should also warn that my setup for this video before my actual test is significantly longer than other videos I've done. Usually I jump right into it. This one's going to require some steps before I get started. As usual, I've got chapters below. So if you don't want to see all the preliminary stuff, you can jump right to the good stuff and check it out. But let's first take a closer look at these gloves. These are the No Cry gloves. I paid $11.49 for them. They are currently a number one bestseller on Amazon with over 34,000 ratings. They offer level five cut resistance. The fabric is 100% food safe, machine washable, snug fit, feels like a second skin. Good for kitchen, woodworking, carving, and more. Four times stronger than leather. And over here, we've got the Schwer. This is $48.99 for one glove. This offers the highest level of cut protection made of stainless steel mesh. It feels like you're about a knight going into battle here with this thing on. One part of the Amazon listing says 304 stainless steel. The other part says 316L stainless steel. I'm not sure which one it is, but it is stainless steel. Reversible ambidextrous design. Doesn't break and shed metal. Rust proof, anti-corrosion. Good for kitchen, handling goods, glasswork, and more. 10 times stronger than leather. You'll have to excuse my voice in this video. I, I'm just going to be being sick for about a week. I feel better. I just don't, I don't sound better. But while I was sick and planning for this video, I watched as many videos as I could in this subject. And I made a list of things that I like to do differently. Not that there was anything wrong with those videos, but just things I would like to do that maybe weren't covered or that I would do differently myself. The first thing I would like to do is make my test as realistic as possible, at least at first. Maybe if I do one cut realistic and then increase it from there. Some tests I saw, they went right to the extreme, start hacking away in the first moment. That might be interesting as far as the gloves go, but it's not gonna happen in real life. Something else I'm gonna try to do is hone my knife between each test because some of these tests will probably dull the knife progressively as it gets used. So honing it between each use is something I will try to do. The next thing on my list is simulating a finger. Now, some people in previous tests use carrots or a meat stick. I can't put something I think is maybe a little bit closer to a real finger than that. It still isn't perfect, but it might be a little bit closer. So, so stick around and I'll show you how my simulated finger was put together. Next up, mandolin slicers. Nobody really used a mandolin slicer. And that's something that I know a lot of people cut their fingers on. So I did want to get one of those. I got a brand new one for this test. It's nice and sharp and we'll see how that goes. I should also point out this video was pretty much conceived and outlined in a state of delirious illness. So if you hate the video, let's just blame it on that. I should also point out, I do see the funny irony in the fact that I'll be doing some of my tests without protective gloves, which I probably should have used. But if you're gonna make that comment, I already beat you to it. So a big shout out to everybody who has tested these gloves out in the past. Hopefully my video will add to the conversation as well. Let's get back inside and start testing. The only test I'm really going to do with my fingers in here are the initial swipe test that you see that the no cry demonstration does. I really don't want to hurt myself in this video, so I've devised a way to avoid that. But let me just do the quick swipe test before I get started. A lot of times you see them doing this kind of thing, right? Which with these chainmail gloves, honestly, I don't I don't feel like that's very dangerous. Now with these gloves, a little more hesitant, but I mean, it's I'm not sure this is that impressive because I think a lot of pair of gloves would prevent you from cutting yourself with this motion. But that's that's the kind of thing that they show on their demonstrations, which is that impressive? I don't know. I'm not really sure that impresses me that much. And that leads me to my next point, which is there's an obvious problem trying to test these gloves out because you really wanna try to get a feel for how far they can go and, and go beyond that limit. So as I said before, others use things like carrots or meat sticks to simulate fingers in the gloves, but I came up with something that I think might be a little bit closer to a real finger. When you cut through a finger, you're gonna go through skin, fat, bone. That's the, that's the main layers you're gonna go through. So I kind of wanted something that simulated that more accurately. I think the King of Random was close with their meat stick with a bamboo shoot in there, but a meat stick is a much leatherier than, than a human skin is, and the bamboo shoot is much smaller than human bone. So here's what I've got. This is a 
hot dog on a pencil. Because a hot dog has a layer of skin kind of like a human, and then it has a layer of fat, and then it has the pencil, which is probably similar to a human bone size. I did have to play around with this a little bit to get him to fit in here, and because these gloves are different, these stretch and these don't, I kind of had to come up with different techniques to get the hot dog into the fingers so I could test them accurately without destroying them when I remove them. All right, so let me show you my technique for creating my fake fingers. Now for the level five glove, it's stretchy, so you can't just shove a hot dog in there, it's gonna get messed up. So what I'm doing for, for the level five is I'm cutting a smaller finger, cut a little piece of the hot dog about like that. Now the next problem is if you just shove a pencil in there, it's actually gonna push the material out, it's gonna crack, it won't be good. So I use a straw to hollow it out. So now we can stick a pencil right in there without damaging the outside. I'm gonna cut this pencil down to a little bit longer than the finger itself. That way I can grab onto it easier. All right, so there's one finger for the level five glove. Now all I have to do is cut a little bit off the edges, a couple edges of this one. You know, while I'm cutting these, I'm gonna wear this, this glove. Might, might as well. I'm not testing it yet, but I'm gonna do it just in case. All right, so once I've trimmed the sides down, I've got my skin here, and it will fit in this tube, which will allow me to insert in these fingers. It seems like a lot, but I think that the results will give us much closer to a real finger when I'm testing these things out. So it's worth the extra work to make these fingers perfect. Now for the chainmail glove, I have to make them a little bit longer because the chainmail the glove does not stretch, so I actually have to just kind of drop it all the way down there and pull it out from the pencil itself. I'm gonna prepare four more of these and four more of these, and then we'll finally get started. All right, here we go, my beautiful fingers, all 10 of them. The smaller ones are gonna be for the stretchable gloves and the larger ones for the chainmail gloves. That's just what I came up with. That will be easiest to get them in and out without destroying them. I do have to cut them down just a little bit so they'll fit better, so that's why that's cut like that. All right, here we go, I got my real fingers in place. Look at that, look, that looks, in, well, it doesn't look, but it feels like real fingers. Just the right consistency, I think. So now we're finally ready to start testing. That was like Mark Rober setup where he goes 40 minutes before you see the demonstration, but I'm no Mark Rober. But let's try our first test and see how these gloves work. I'm kind of excited about this. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move these gloves off to the side with their beautiful fingers in there. I'm gonna get a, another one of my fake fingers, which is a hot dog with a pencil inside of it. I'm just gonna run this knife quickly over it using about a moderate amount of pressure. And then I'm gonna do the same amount of pressure on the other gloves and see what happens. Okay, I'm kind of putting a little bit of pressure there oops right into the finger that's a that's a pretty bad cut right there that is a fingertip that might be some stitches let's go with the ring finger on this one so i'm going to move it up there there's a little bit of gap in the, in the tip i have to be careful of so i'm going to try to hit it more in the center say one two aha nothing ah, pretty good i'm gonna try it a second time one two all right, look, it, it definitely caught that. Chainmail gloves now. All right, here we go. Ring finger again. One, two. Oh, no problem. No problem. One more time. One, two. Let me try some, some more slicing on this ring finger. You know, I can tell if I push down, I do see a little bit of fraying. You probably can't see it on camera, but... That's pretty good. Let's try this one. Now this one, I, I don't feel like the knife's ever gonna go through that. That's, that's pretty solid. So let me see what I'm chopping. Uh, that's, that's, not, that's not going anywhere. Let's try this one. Now the King of Random did a, a carrot chopping test. I wanna do the same thing with both gloves and see how they hold up. They were doing a chop like this. Hiya. Hiya. What happens if we do a hiya with the fake finger there? <laughs> fake finger is uh, gonna need some surgery. Let's try the uh, level five gloves with the thumb. Oh, it stopped it. It definitely st it stopped it. Look at this. It definitely stopped it. Compared to the, the hot dog, that was pretty good. Let's try the thumb on the level nine now. Oh, that was, 
didn't even make a dent, nothing there. So far, I'm very impressed by both pairs of gloves. I guess I'm more impressed by level five gloves because there's a lower level on the scale and it's cheaper. I should point out, I have been honing this knife in between each use with my Bavarian edge over here. I'm just kind of reaching over and giving it a few swipes. So I am trying to keep it uh, honed between each use, but what I wanted to try, which I've definitely cut myself on in the past when I was younger, is a potato peeler. Because you know, you have this blade right next to your fingers. I mean, that's, that's definitely going to be a source for some people cutting themselves. All right, so for the pit, potato peeler, I've got one finger right up against the end here. I'm going to just go hard right into that finger and see what happens. Oh, I hit it. Let me try one more time. That's, that's how it landed, just like that. And it didn't, hey, it didn't, look at that, nothing. The level fives have brought their A game to this competition, I must say. Do we even need to test the chain mail? You know it's going to be okay, but let's try it on anyways. I'm literally peeling onto the finger. Nothing at all. These, these chainmail are no joke. I mean, that's why they had these in the dark ages because this is, I don't know if it's stab proof, but it certainly is cut proof. Let me try that, that same technique with the level five again. Just peeling right onto it. I'm just gonna pick the pinky finger here. All right, it's a little bit of a fraying, but it, it definitely protected the finger. How about something like some, uh, say you're cutting cardboard with this, with this box cutter. Let's try it about that level right there. Do our fake index finger right there. Try that one more time. It kind of, it kind of slipped. If I go directly onto it, oh, I did get a little bit of, oh, I got a little bit of frame, but that would have been a lot worse on a finger. Same idea. Absolutely nothing. So here's one case where I did get a little bit of damage to the level five glove, no damage to the chain mail whatsoever. Let's try our, our hot dog finger and see how that look, looks in the same test. Oh, you got some stitches, you got some stitches. One thing I really haven't seen a lot of is how does a serrated knife do with these types of glove? I don't know. Uh, you would think that it would tug the material, but, but I'm not sure. I'm just gonna just cut something randomly here. I'm gonna try the more extreme part of the edge. I'm going to saw with that, and then saw with that. Look, at all it really did was discolor. It didn't really get through it too much. Chainmail time. Once again, unscathed. I don't know if I can get the chainmail gloves to, to break. I mean, that's... You'd almost have to have some sort of industrial food grinder or something to get that to happen. But I'm gonna keep trying. Let's do a carrot level chop. And move the fingers in the way and same pressure. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, we actually got, we got through the glove into some skin. I mean, that's a very extreme example, but let's try the fake finger and see how that holds up. All right, we're all, all the way to the bone on that one. And it's time for the chain mail. Let's try this one more time. Well, look at this. Hot dog actually smashed through the chain mail, but the chain mail itself did not break. So that would hurt, but it would save your finger. So in that case, with no glove, you'd probably be going to the hospital. With a level five glove, you'd probably have a cut. With a chain mail, you'd probably have a little bruise. Let's try a mandolin slicer, shall we? Most mandolin slicers have a, a cover, but let's say you don't want to use that, you want to use a glove instead. This is an OXO mandolin slicer, very sharp. Look at this, I'm barely even touching it and right through there. It's extremely sharp. Let's try running some of these fingers over that blade. Oh, wow. Let's see. We... It felt like the blade went into the glove, but I don't see any kind of a perforation. Let me try again. So let's see, we got potato, gently slides through and it cut it off. Finger. It's not cutting it. All right, it's, uh, it's protecting it. The chain mail, I'm not really worried about that. Let's see, the chain mail. Nothing's gonna happen to that chain mail.
The chainmail will probably break this before this breaks the chainmail. Nothing, nothing at all. Just out of curiosity, what happens if you use a pizza cutter? I got my beautiful Star Trek pizza cutter here. Fake finger first. Hiya. Yet another hospital visit. You're gonna have a lot of bills this month. Did not cut through. Multiple passes. I'm even, I'm even pushing down. Not cutting it. And of course, the chain mail. Too easy. That's not even a challenge. I don't know if I can cut through the chain mail, but let me see how easy it is to cut through the level five. I can get through these if I try hard enough. They, even the instructions say they're not cut proof, they're cut resistant. I could definitely get through them. If I try hard enough, I can definitely get through it. These, I, I don't think I could. I'm, I'm striking it. I've actually just cut the hot dog in half inside the finger. Just from the pressure alone, I, I can't cut it. I cannot cut this. This is uncuttable. This one's cuttable, but very tough. All right, as far as just some regular everyday tests goes, I think they both did really well. I only had one finger on the level five that, that punctured through. The rest of them did quite well. The final results of the fake fingers. Now this is from the chain mail. The only real damage is actually from an impact, not from a cut. The same with this side as well, except for most of this damage is from impact or from using the box cutter at the end there. My fake finger did not fare too well, even in regular tests. That one, that one, and the tip was cut off completely. What this also tells me is that while it may be pretty cut resistant, you can still crush your finger if you impact it. All right, so in the end, I think as far as I'm concerned, both these are very good gloves. I honestly, I think the, to answer the question at the beginning of this video was why this one, well, let me hold up the, the one I didn't use. This is what it looks like beforehand. This is the before and the after. It's a bit ugly on the after. It's a bit ugly. This is the beautiful before, this is the ugly after. But I think to answer the question in the beginning of this video is why people choose the level five over the level nine is number one, I think the level nine is overkill for a lot of people. It's also much more expensive, 50 bucks for one glove as opposed to under 20 for two. Also, cleaning this is a bit of a pain. It's metal, it doesn't dry out that easily. It's a different procedure. These are much easier to wash, just like regular gloves are. They're also lighter. They give you much more dexterity than, the, than these do. I can see why people would go for these over these, although these are pretty impressive, even with hot dogs in the fingers. But that's all I've got. If you've tried gloves like these, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.